This fragile reel of tape contains the voice of one of the most feared men in history. Everyone knows his name. This is a fragment of the only existing tape recording of Adolf Hitler speaking privately, not as a screaming actor on the world stage. But as a human being, using the full power of his personality, trying to bend others to his will, this recording is an extraordinary window into the mind and madness of one of history's most terrifying figures. This is the Adolf Hitler we think we know. But this is just a caricature. Images culled from the Nazi propaganda machine. But there was another hidden Adolf Hitler. A soft-spoken, almost charming conversationalist. During his reign of terror, Hitler let his guard down only once. When his voice was captured not on stage, but behind closed doors. And so came this verzögerung. I ich im Jahre 39 when I heard the tape for the first time, it became much more clear to me why other politicians had, for some time at least, believed into Hitler's words. This tape was recorded in a private train car in Finland on June 4th, 1942. The man to whom Hitler was speaking was Marshal Karl Gustav Mannerheim commander-in-chief of the Finnish Armed Forces. The Finnish recording is the only one of its kind. I think it is a key to understand the way how Hitler dealt with his partners, his style, the way he tries to seduce Mannerheim, to convince him. Gustav Mannerheim is still revered in Finland. He led Finland in their fight for independence from Russia in 1917. And during the Second World War, Mannerheim fought against two of the 20th century's most lethal regimes. As a token of a nation's continuing esteem, his personal train has been preserved as a museum. Inside a private room in this car, radio technician Tor Domain recorded over 11 minutes of Hitler speaking privately with Mannerheim. Today, this extraordinary recording lies hidden in the sound archives of the Finnish National Broadcasting Company in Helsinki. Within this archive, 300,000 tapes are stored, but this tape is like no other. I have said always that uh, this tape is the most valuable tape in our archive because it is the only tape in the world where Hitler speaks freely. Adolf Hitler was defined by his public image, and that image was carefully manufactured by the Nazis. The Nazis turned propaganda into a fine art and a deadly weapon. A terrifying but persuasive lie that millions believe. The leading player in all of this was Adolf Hitler. Hitler's image was complex. He needed the Germans to believe in him, to love him, and to fear him. He accumulated absolute power by developing a pseudo-religious mystical cult of personality. Hitler could act well enough, his acting style and so, but he was put there by the masses. If he had spoken like a priest, no one would have listened. Hitler adapted his image to each situation. Here, addressing Parliament, he spoke diplomatically, playing the intelligent statesman. 
Here with industrialists, he spoke and dressed like a businessman. When Hitler addressed Nazi party meetings, playing the rabble-rouser, his tone is unmistakably violent. The pictures you can see made of Hitler in the papers and books are censored. For instance, you will never see Hitler with his hands in his pocket. Hitler with his hands in his pockets might appear relaxed, and that was precisely the image he did not want to project. Hitler's public image wasn't only built up by the propaganda machine, it was also refined and distilled, stripped down to the bare essentials. In Germany there was a strict censorship, especially with everything dealing with the Führer, the leader himself. Photographs, as well as interviews, were strictly controlled. Hitler's public image presented him as a superman, endowed with godlike powers. Here in the film Triumph of the Will, the message is clear. Hitler is descending from the heavens like a deity. This deity had no time for friendship or family, no time to even drink alcohol. He devoted his life to the power and resurgent glory of the new Germany. Throughout all the propaganda, Hitler's image is that of a solitary man standing in the eye of a hurricane of hate that he himself had created. He was a consummate actor, always aware that the eyes of a mass audience were upon him. And in front of that audience, he could be whoever he wanted to be. Today his speeches have been excerpted and edited in ways that obliterate their original meaning. But when Hitler is allowed to speak within the original context, his power of persuasion is unmistakable. For example, in April 1939, Hitler was at the height of his power and popularity in Germany. He had executed a series of conquests without bloodshed, occupying Austria and part of Czechoslovakia. His new order was on the march, and nobody knew just how far Hitler was prepared to go. It was almost five months before the war started, and almost two years before the attack on Pearl Harbor. The United States was still neutral, and President Roosevelt was trying to head off a war he saw on the horizon. Roosevelt sends Hitler a telegram of concern, listing the countries he thought Hitler was targeting. Hitler replies in one of his best public performances, a twisted, stand-up comic routine. Herr Roosevelt verlaut endlich die Bereitwilligkeit, ihm die Zusicherung zu geben, dass die deutschen Streitkräfte das Staatsgebiet oder die Besitzungen folgender unabhängiger unabhängiger Nationen nicht angreifen und vor allem nicht dort einmarschieren würden. Und er nennt als dafür in Frage kommend nun Finnland, Lettland, Litauen, Estland, Norwegen, Schweden, Dänemark, Niederlande, Belgien, Großbritannien, Irland, Frankreich, Portugal, Spanien, die Schweiz, Liechtenstein, Luxemburg, Polen, Ungarn, Rumänien, Jugoslawien, Russland, Bulgarien, Türkei, Irak, Arabien, Syrien, Palästina, Ägypten. Hitler would, of course, invade more than half of the countries on Roosevelt's list. But lying came easily to Adolf Hitler. And he was one of the first modern politicians to truly understand the awesome power and influence of the media. He and his advisors micromanaged every public appearance. He played a role. It was different roles, as we know, meanwhile. Uh, but performance was part of his nature. And that makes this tape so extraordinary. Not just because someone managed to record it, but because of the way Hitler sounds. Charming, relaxed, perhaps most shockingly, completely reasonable. This is nothing like the Hitler we think we know. So much so that some believe this recording is a forgery. Sometimes it feels okay, but at other points not. I have the feeling it's someone mimicking Hitler. Could this carefully modulated voice really be that of Adolf Hitler? 
Dr. Stefan Grafer, head of forensic speech analysis at the Bundeskriminalamt, the German FBI, will help unravel this mystery. Is it Hitler's voice in this short sample we have, or is it somebody mimicking him? And if this really is the private Hitler, what was he saying? Did he divulge secrets that might rewrite the history of World War II? The investigation continues. This unique recording of Adolf Hitler speaking privately captures a side of Hitler never before heard. For this reason, some believe it may be a hoax. It really sounds as if someone is mimicking him. The truth is in the details. Hitler's